Awesome, let's get started. Uh, this is a Jepson CR3 flight computer, one of the coolest flight computer uh, out. And uh, this is the same thing as your E6P. This is, um, they, they call it circular E6P. So this is basically the slide roll. And there are two sides. This is the computer side, and this is the wind side. Uh, as the name suggests, this is uh, to calculate the wind problems, and this is to calculate general um, flight computations. Uh, uh, and yeah, there are windows also, so you can use these windows uh, to calculate some other things that uh, we'll we'll discuss later. So. Um, there is a moving circle and so we call this variable and this the, the, the outer disk is uh, the fixed portion. So this is the variable portion and this is the fixed portion. Um, when we set this against uh, the numbers on the fixed portion, uh, it allows us to solve problems like time, speed, distance, fuel consumption, and make conversions between the measurements such as statue and nautical miles. The inner scale on the rotating disk is graduated in hours. So if you look here, this is 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is graduating in hours. The calculator side um, is a very interesting thing. So you can do so many things with it. Um, the one hour triangle on the rotating disk is marked differently than the other numbers and that is because most of the most of the problems that we are concerned about is with time something per hour uh, either miles or gallons um, and we have to learn how to like calculate this because this is the critical thing that we wanted to calculate with the supply computer let's rotate the disk until we have these numbers right below each other. So this one against one. Uh, right now, uh, this number, this 10, could be read as 0.1 or one or 10 or 100 or 1000. It depends on the context of the problem uh, that uh, we wanted to uh, work on. So for now, we are reading it as 10. The next number to the right is 11. And uh, so each tick mark in here is in 0.1 increase. And you would read them as 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, etc. So if you were solving a problem involving 1,000 pounds of, of fuel, the number 10 would be read as 1,000, and each calibration would be equal to 10 pounds, and the 11 would be read as 1,100 pounds. Now, look at the number 15 uh, here on the other scale. Between 15 and 16, each calibration mark is equal to 0.2, and uh, would be read as 15.2, 15.4, and etc. If you were solving a problem with an air speed of 150 knots, the first calibration past 15 would be 152. The spacing changes again at the number 30 in here. So if you look here, it is starting to change in 0.5 increments. And, and at 60, uh, the increment will change to 1, so it will start to change in uh, 1, so 61, 62, 63, and uh, this is how it is uh, changing, the scale is changing as uh, as the, the number is increasing. So, generally with the slide rule, we will solve problems um, like in ratios. So. Um, right now, ratio is one to one. And if I want to have like a, a ratio of like times two, let's say, I would change it to 
something like this. So let's say I want to multiply things. Um, if I change this to five, so this is five and 10. So five times two is equal 10. Now look, it is six, six times two, 12, times two, 16, times two, 20. So this is how you set these ratios. Now, if I want to, let's say, calculate point uh, like times three problem, uh, I, can, I can do this. So let's put three below 90, so times three. Now, look here, this is times three, this is times three. And so you can just by looking at uh, how you set something uh, between these uh, moving part and the fixed part, you can define uh, uh, the ratio that you're looking for. Now, another way of looking at the same uh, ratio problem is that, so I, I started telling you just put a times two thing and everything will be times two. Now, really is this. So this is 60, yes? So you can work with the, with the index. So 60, so six times two is 12. And um, like some people love to like uh, look at the index and work with the index. So this is a times three and uh and you can you can like work with this so like this is a times four and everything will be um a a time uh four problem in here so this is another way of uh, interpreting but really it's the, it's the same uh principle now let's look at something interesting um there is an inside scale so this this like uh, thin line in here, uh, uh, so you you would see hours uh, written in here. So the trick is like this. So uh, if if you look here, from here onward, the inner scale. So this like ten is. Hours, so everything inside is hours. So you can read it as um, like ten hours or one hour, and uh, this is eleven, twelve, and like so. This inside part is in hours, okay, and the outer part is in minutes. So this out this outer part is in uh, minutes. Okay, um, and it is a little bit tricky to like figure out how you should interpret this. So if you look at um, one thirty here, so one thirty is directly below ninety. Uh, so one hour and thirty minutes is the same as ninety minutes. Okay, uh, and if you look at five in where is five here okay so if you look at five it's printed right below 30 indicating five hours is the same as 300 minutes okay so um and uh like this is this is a, a little tricky when when to read what so let's say i want to interpret um something like this so let's look at this so 20 hours is 1200 minutes so how you're interpreting is based on the context and the scope of the problem that you're looking at now let's do something cool uh, i want to calculate uh how many seconds is uh, in given minutes. So if I change this to here, so let's say uh, one minute, and in this 
inner scale we have this second arrow i hope you, you can see it so this second right below 60 so one minute is 60 seconds and if i change it to like two it will be 120 seconds okay so very easily i can calculate uh things and uh um, and uh, have have the answer. So again, like 15, uh, one and a half minutes is 90 seconds. And again, based on the context, you can change it to uh, fit your answer.